guys, it's Steph again, and I am back today to review some brand new makeup I got in the mail from Sephora yesterday. So I received a package yesterday that included some of the new Selena Gomez Rare Beauty products that I ordered from Sephora. Um, I got four different products from the line. I didn't get all of them. I only picked a few select items that I thought I would actually use on a regular basis. Um, so I picked up the foundation her uh, a mini size of the illuminating primer. I got the double-ended brow pencil, and I also got one of her liquid blushes. So I got these four products. We are gonna do a first impression on wear as well as a wear test today. So I don't have anything on my face, but I do have my eyes done, as you can see. Um, I did a look with my new pumpkin spice palette with the some of the purples in there that are real pretty, but I didn't wanna waste time um, you know, 20 minutes doing my eyes um, when the focus of this video is actually on the Rare Beauty products. But I will list down below what products I used on my eyes as well as the shades that I used for this look if you're interested. So from a concept standpoint on this new Rare Beauty line, there's a lot to really love about these products and about the person behind them. I mean, who doesn't love Selena Gomez? She's a sweetheart. She's gorgeous. She's talented. She's a wonderful human being. Um, but for, uh, as far as the products are concerned, so number one, the packaging is really, really cool looking. It's very like just sleek and modern and simple. And I really like that about that. Um, plus, she put a lot of thought behind this product line, which I think is really cool. Number one, um, I'm sure many people are aware that Serena, Selena Gomez was diagnosed with lupus a while back. And so when she designed the packaging for these products, the, the tops on them are made with these little kind of, I don't know, looks like a mento on this one, a little ball on this one. But it's to help people who have you know, autoimmune disorders or like arthritis who have difficulty with the flexibility and movement of their hands to actually get these bottles open because a lot of bottles can be difficult for people who have um, issues with movement in their hands. So there's that factor. Number two, she also is donating money um, from the sale of these products to help with um, mental health services. So she's got that kind of mission behind it. The other thing that's awesome about this is that this foundation, she's got them in 48 different shades. That is a phenomenal amount of shades for a foundation. Um, and that's one place where I think she really kind of outshines the competition when it comes to these foundations. Um, because not only is the packaging easy to use for people with mobility issues in their hands, but also the shade uh, range is just great and so I feel like this is a really inclusive product that a lot of different people can use so that's a wonderful thing about all these and also she's got the kind of this mission about how we don't need to live up to these like commercial standards of beauty rare beauty being a brand to let our own beauty shine through and be able to find beauty in every person regardless so that's kind of the story behind these products so we're gonna go ahead and get started with this product today so the first thing I'm gonna start with is this um, illuminating primer that I purchased from her line. Now I got the mini version because I didn't know if I would like it so I didn't want to spend. It's like $26 for the full size but $14 for this little one so I picked up the little one instead and if I love it I can always go back and get the other one. So this is kind of like a creamy primer that's got some like pearlescent type beads in it so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that all over my face and you can already see it's giving me a really nice glow and again I have to apologize for the lighting. Unfortunately so I live in Michigan and it's super hazy outside and they're saying on the news that it's because of all the, the smoke in the atmosphere from the wildfires that are happening on the West Coast right now. So um, it's actually come all the way across the country and it's causing us to have quite a bit of haze outside today. Um, so those wildfires are just absolutely devastating for the West Coast. I feel terrible for them over there. but. Okay, so I've got the primer on. Now this primer is, like I said, an illuminating prim primer. It's supposed to help make your makeup last longer and, you know, have it lay nicely on top, but it is not intended, I don't believe, for like pore filling capabilities. So because of that, and I do this honestly, like anytime I use a hydrating primer, like my Too Faced primer, I always also include this e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer in addition to it because this is really good for filling pores and I've got gigantic pores on my nose. So I'm going to use this in addition just to kind of help 
keep that foundation from settling into those pores and just kind of keep my skin a little more smooth looking. And like I said, um, because I'm testing this foundation out, I want to make sure that I'm starting with a similar base to what I would use under any other foundation that I would use, you know, on a typical day. So we're going to go ahead and pause for just a moment while I clean my hands up here. Okay, I am back. I got my hands all cleaned off and we're ready to start off with the foundation. Now, this foundation, it does have like a little shaker in it. You can sort of hear it. Um, but you're supposed to shake it up ahead of time. I'm assuming it's pretty liquidy. Uh, and I actually heard someone say something about that it needed to be shaken for six seconds. So we'll do it for about six-ish seconds. I don't know, is that six seconds? And we'll go ahead and go in with this uh, foundation. Now, this foundation is... I believe they market it as a medium coverage. Let's just take a look here on Sephora's website. Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. It's supposed to be a medium to full coverage with a natural finish that feels barely there. So I have heard from other people though that this isn't a true like medium to full. It actually leans more toward the light build up to medium side, uh, which I'm okay with. Uh, I don't necessarily like a full soft coverage concealer on a normal basis. However, I don't really want a sheer concealer either. However, uh, now that that primer's had a minute to set in, it actually made my skin look quite nice. I think I might pick up the full size of that. But let's go ahead and start with this concealer. I'm just going to kind of, and I've also heard that a little bit goes a long way. So we're just going to put some it's really actually not as runny as I was expecting it to be. It's more, um, I would say like a lotion consistency, not necessarily like a serum consistency, but it's not like a thick, like creamy, or thick creamy foundation either. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with a damp sponge here to blend that out. And we'll see how this blends. Ugh, okay, let's see. Now, apologize too if there's any background noise, guys. I Again, we're home doing virtual schooling again today. and oh, So, are any of you out there doing virtual schooling as well? It's not, not been the easiest, but I guess better than the alternative. Um, okay, so this is... I mean, it's blending out nice. I don't know... I might need to let it dry down a little bit. It seems a little bit shiny on my skin, but it's not terrible. Like, maybe with a setting powder, it will be a little more. It is pretty sheer. I don't, I don't really know. I feel like it's just kind of shiny. I, it doesn't look terrible. But it's definitely, it doesn't sit the same way like, say, my, um, like my Too Faced matte foundations and stuff sit. But let me, I'm just gonna, the color actually is pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit more. Yeah, I would definitely say this falls on the light side as far as coverage is concerned. Um, but you know, I have been seeing some other people on YouTube here who are about my age, you know, like the 40 range and really not liking this, having it not work for their skin, but many of them have drier skin and I've heard it clings to dry patches and I don't have that issue. I lean more toward the combo or even a little toward the oily side. So, but I've heard that this is not great for dry skin folks um, because it really clings to that, but that's not an issue for me. So um, really, I don't feel like I'm having that problem with it. I do really think like this is going to have to get set with a powder big time because it is super shiny, which I'm, I like matte, more matte foundations, but we'll, we'll put a powder on there and see how she, how she goes. Um, for now though, we're going to go within with some concealer under the eyes. I did not buy her concealer because I heard it was kind of bad about settling into fine lines and things like that, which is a huge problem for me. So I'm going to use this instant rewind, uh, age rewind concealer that I use under my eyes. And again, I'm not one to use a lot of this because of that settling into the lines thing. So I don't like it to be thick. I just put just a little bit underneath there, try to combat those eyes. So while I'm doing this, I will tell you too, that I tried out on this um, mascara. I tried out that new Charlotte Tilbury 
Pillow Talk push-up mascara I got yesterday, and I really like it. It's a drier formula, uh, which I prefer, and I feel like it gave me really good definition. It didn't give me any clumping. It gave me a lot of length on my lashes, so I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm looking forward to using it more in the future. So I am next going to do a little bit of bronzer, and I'm just going to use this CoverGirl um, True Blend Serving Sculpt palette that I got. It's like a bronzer highlighter blush trio. So I'm going to use the bronzer and the highlighter out of this um, palette just because it was easy to grab. Because um, I'm going to use the liquid blush from the Rare Beauty line. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit of light um, bronzer on here to get myself just to deepen up the skin a little bit and give myself a little bit of sun if you will i'm gonna wait to set with powder till after i've done with my blush because i don't want that liquid blush to go on top of the powder and like break it up so there's a little bit of bronzer and now we're gonna go in with this liquid blush now i've heard fantastic things about this oh i forgot to mention that foundation was 29 dollars. this liquid blush i believe runs 20 dollars just gonna double check yes twenty dollars comes in seven different shades this is uh the shade that is called bliss and it's kind of like a light pinky peachy color it's supposed to go on sheer and blend out now this stuff also is like a little bit goes a long way kind of a deal so i'm gonna put it on my hand so i don't get too heavy-handed with it uh and go crazy because as you can see uh, it just flew everywhere it's like it's pretty pigmented for a blush so I'm going to put it on the back of my hand and dip into it with my sponge and just kind of like blend it out on my cheeks here. And oh wow, it is really pretty. I mean, I've heard other people say that, but it's nice and sheer. Um, and it's giving me a nice little kind of just peachy pinky glow. I don't like a lot of blush. Um, I like just a real sheer wash of color because I feel like on my fair skin, it looks like clown-like if I use too much. But I do think I need just a smidge more on my left-hand side here. So I'm gonna do that. But I will say this blush, goodbye. I would highly recommend it. It's um, for sure worth the investment. And really at the $20 price point, like you're using so little of it. It's gonna last forever. So it's really like it's worth it that's pretty yeah I feel like that gives me a really nice sheer wash of color I would buy that again all right I'm gonna go ahead and just go in with a quick set of my powder I'm gonna use this Maybelline lasting fix loose setting powder just to kind of set a few things down but I'm probably gonna go back through with my NYX one after the fact this is just to sort of get this makeup nice and set because this foundation is kind of I don't know dry or wet if you will it's not really like sinking in and drying down so hopefully if I set it with that I can go ahead and finish up with my highlighter here and, you know maybe get this to dry down so it doesn't slide all over my face okay now I'm just going to go in with this little this highlighter right here that came in this CoverGirl palette and just sort of get the high points of my face. I really am a big fan of this highlighter. It's a really good drugstore option and it gives you kind of just like a nice, almost kind of pinky look, but I like it. I'm a fan. Okay, we'll put that away now. And I think we're going to go ahead and do just like a powder all over it, And then I'm going to try out this brow pencil from Selena. So I'm going to use this NYX. I'll close it so you can read it. NYX HD Finishing Powder. Um, I'm a fan of this. This gives a really nice just sort of like overall photo finish kind of blurring effect. And just a nice matte look that will set down your makeup and keep you from looking shiny so I have to admit okay so I don't mind the coverage so much on this since I used that that pore blurring primer I don't feel like it's settling into the fine lines or the pores like other P2 
people who have reviewed it had said, but the feeling that I get about this is that it's not going to last all day and that I'm going to be shiny and powdering multiple times. So we'll see. That's just my guess. Um, but like I said, I'll check back in in about eight to 10 hours and we'll see how it looks. And I'm, I'm not going to powder all day um, just to see how it looks by the end of the day. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to try out this Rare Beauty double-ended, um, what do they actually call it? Brow Harmony. Uh, I've got it in soft blonde. So this has two ends. You've got your pencil end, which is like this sort of teardrop type shape for filling and then on this end you have your brow gel so just kind of so you can see it so I've got it in that soft, soft blonde color which is kind of a taupey color now when I do my brows I don't do a lot with like the shape or or filling in hairs I just actually kind of want to give it a little bit of color because my brows are practically see-through so I've heard that this is like a little bit pigmented so I'm going to go ahead and go in with a very light hand so we're just gonna kind of Oh, it's not terrible. It's actually a really good color for me. So we're gonna just kind of run that through. Now the only thing that is kind of one downfall about this particular product is that it doesn't have like a clean spoolie on it. So, and I like to run a spoolie through just to sort of even out that color and it's like I'm a little dark right there. So I'm just gonna take this, this little spoolie that I have. It's like a Moda brow brush that's got like a ankle brush on one end and a spoolie on the other. And I'm just gonna run that through my brows to give it, just fluff them up a little bit and run that color through. And um, and then I'm gonna use this brow gel to set those in place. This is a little on the loose side. It's not real thick. It's kind of thin and whoo, that's going in a little thick. I'm gonna have to run my spoolie back through to Thin that out, holy smokes, that's, you're gonna have to wipe off the excess with that. Wow, there's a lot on that brush, way too much. Okay, let's try it on this side after I've wiped it off, it's a little better, but I think you're gonna have to run like a, just a plain spoolie in afterwards to get the excess out because it's a little crazy how much comes out on that brush. But otherwise, I feel like that looks good. Um, now, you'll see maybe some other videos on these products where you, people aren't a fan of this brow pencil. And I get that. If you're someone who's got more like sparse brows and you're actually having to really do a lot of shaping and drawing in individual hairs and things, this is not going to give you the detail that you need for that. It, it's going to look blocky probably. But if you're someone with like me who already has pretty full brows naturally and just wants a little color to deepen it up and frame your eyes a little better, this is a good product. Um, and I like that it has like the double duty dual ended design um, because then I can just use this one tool except for the fact that I have to carry this extra spoolie. Um, but for traveling purposes, it's nice to have this one piece that I can carry. So I would buy this again. So this is uh, my completed look. I'm just gonna set this really quick with my, nat, uh, mm. my NYX matte setting spray that I use every day. Amazon's actually bringing me a giant bottle of this today. I'm pretty excited. So anyways, this is our completed look with the Rare Beauty. So kind of final thoughts on this before we do our full-on wear test. Um, the blush and the brow pencil and the primer, I really liked for sure. Like those, I think I'm going to go back and get that primer in a, like the full size because it gave me a really, really nice glow. I liked it a lot. Um, the foundation, I'm going to kind of go with a, like a wait and see approach here. Now that I've powdered it and set it down, I feel like it looks pretty good on me. So it'd be okay. Um, it does sort of almost feel kind of loose and wet. So I'm afraid this is going to kind of move around and collect in places throughout the day. So we'll see. Um, if it doesn't wear well, I'm just going to return it because I have plenty of other foundations that do exactly what I need them to. So again, concerns about this is that it's not going to stay matte. It's going to get shiny. It's going to move around and it's not going to last all day, but we'll see. Maybe it'll be awesome. And I don't know. I shouldn't assume. So anyways, for now, it's about 930 in the morning. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now and we will check back in at the end of the day to see how this foundation wore. Stay tuned, I'm also going to be doing another video later today uh, on the new, well, I don't really know how new it is, the Wonder Skin Wonder Blading 
lipstick that you may have seen floating around on your Facebook feed. I did buy that and wanted to try that out for you guys. So, all right, thanks, bye. We'll see you in a few hours to see how this foundation wears. Hi guys, just checking in tonight. It's about 5.30 p.m. So I've been wearing this Selena Gomez Rare Beauty foundation for roughly eight hours now, so like a typical work day. And uh, as I suspected, it really didn't hold up as well as I had hoped. Uh, I mean, it's not terrible, but, um, and I don't know how well you can really see, but I do have like quite a bit of shine through my T-zone area. And if you look closely, you can see it's like collected kind of along my nose here. It's sunk into my pores. It's kind of collected along my chin. So it really did not stay in place like I had hoped. Again, it's not terrible. Um, and I mean, again, I really do love the thought behind the company, the thought behind the packaging. Uh, are all really, really great things. And it's definitely better than like, you know, a cheap drugstore brand, but it's not as good as some of the higher end foundations that I have. So at a price point of $29, I think I am going to return this foundation simply because for $10 more, I have other foundations in my collection that give me a lot better performance, a lot better wear time, and a lot better coverage. So that's just my final thought on the foundation. Now, however, the other three products I tried, the Illuminating Primer, the Brow Pencil, and the Blush, all still look really good. I mean, you can still see the blush on my cheeks here, but my brows still look good, and the primer was really nice. So those things I would buy again in a heartbeat, but this foundation just isn't for me. Um, it also, I noticed, so I have like combination leaning toward oily skin and it this foundation somehow found like some random dry patches on my chin that I didn't even know existed. So this is definitely not a foundation that is good for someone with dry skin. Maybe someone with even oilier skin than me might have better better luck, but then I'm afraid it would just you'd be oily, you'd be shiny, and it would be sliding around all over your face. So I'm not really sure on this, but it's not terrible but it's not great either. So that's my final thought on the foundation. But either way, um Stay tuned. I've got uh, the the um, Urban Decay Stone Palette coming up later this week that I'm going to be trying out. And I still have those Natasha Denona uh, monochrome uh, liquid shadows that I need to do a video on as well. And some looks with that new Natasha Denona Glam Palette. So keep an eye out for those. If you like the content I'm putting out lately, please hit the subscribe button down below. Join me for more videos in the future. Um, and some unboxings should be coming up too for my subscription boxes. So thanks a lot. Have a great night, guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.